In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have I overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put us into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Standing before the high priest and the council, Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God but they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. 
How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me, because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus is about to depart from his friends. Everything that his disciples know of him and carry out in his name will very soon be done in the absence of their leader and in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The passage from St. John's Gospel plays out this dialogue between presence and absence. Jesus speaks of his Father's house, a place where heaven and earth meet. This is a new heaven and a new earth. Because of the victory of Christ on the cross with the powers of evil and death, the whole creation is renewed and transformed by the glory of God. For those of us who live in unholy cities, in unholy times, times pervaded by evil, sin, disease and death, this is a glorious image of a complete and perfect safety, a safety guaranteed by the reality of the presence of God in Christ. A troubled Thomas asks of Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus answers, I am the way and the truth and the life. It is a conversation that begins in the presence of Jesus before the crucifixion and continues after the resurrection. As Jesus appears amongst his disciples and invites Thomas to place his hands in his wounds, and Thomas answers, my Lord and my God. Thomas is invited to believe in the risen Jesus, as are all Christ's followers through the generations. Yet Thomas's failure is his need and his demand for a personal, visible assurance of the presence of the risen Jesus. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The Acts of the Apostles describes the brutal and gruesome stoning of Stephen. As he stands before the High Priest and the Council, those present refuse to hear Stephen's lengthy, pointed sermon directed towards his audience for their part in the murder of the Messiah. He accuses them of being like the Egyptians, those who enslaved their ancestors and opposed the action of the Holy Spirit in the world. The audience cover their ears and rush to permanently close Stephen's mouth. This is another story of mob violence and religious hatred, which signalled a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem and marked Stephen as the first of countless Christian martyrs through the ages. Yet Christians cannot claim any special persecution status. Many other religions have experienced similar martyrdoms, indeed, sometimes at the hands of Christians. And millions more have been martyred for reasons other than religion, 
for their ethnicity, ideology and gender, from African slaves and Jews to Armenians and Tutsis. Through Stephen's martyrdom, through his witness, we are rooted in our very real world of industrial scale slaughter, but called to remember the individual humanity of the millions of people we might otherwise forget. Stephen's death expands our vision as we are called to honour the life of every person, every child of God in the world. In the language of our Jewish forebears, we are called to speak up for those who have no voice and for the justice of all who are dispossessed. Speak up, judge righteously and defend the cause of the oppressed. The story of Stephen, with its echoes of the crucifixion of Jesus, is a bleak and brutal tale, yet it contains a powerful light, albeit one that is yet to be set aflame, that of the young man Saul, who looks after the coats of the murderers. This is our first encounter with the great missionary apostle, who we will later know as Paul. Soon Paul will have his life turned upside down by a visit from Jesus himself, and as a result, he will become the apostle to the Gentiles, opening the gospel message to all people, even to the ends of the earth. And unlike the bitter words of Stephen for his audience, Paul will pray that his friends will see the ways of the new Christian and come to understand their invitation to a new heaven and a new earth, an unholy city transformed by the glory of God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who of the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we commend to your love the church in the world praying especially for James and Simon, our bishops, for all leaders and teachers within your church. We give thanks for all who serve you in our own parish and pray that you would keep us constantly open to your will and that you would lead us to follow Jesus in all things as the way, the truth and the life. Lord, hear us. We commend to your love all involved in medical care and medical research and support for those affected by the pandemic. We pray for key workers, emergency services and those who place themselves at risk in supporting our community. And we pray for leaders of nations that they may be inspired by a primary concern for the lives health and welfare of all their people. And we pray for an end to this time of trial. Lord, hear us. We commend to your love, Lord, 
all families and all people in our parish and community. We pray for those who are isolated and separated from friends and loved ones at this time. Lord, soothe the hearts that are troubled. Bring comfort and healing to those who are anxious or ill. Lord, hear us. We commend to your love all who have died. May the Lord who has gone before to prepare a place for us receive the souls of the faithful and grant them the perfect knowledge of his love. Lord, hear us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that, by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, 
we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Blessed Mary ever virgin, Saint George, Saint Barnabas and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of peace, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.